Okay, uh, class, we will talk about convergence properties of gradient descent methods uh, in today's class. So, the gradient descent was defined as not the gradient descent but gradient method, which includes gradient descent as a specific case. x k plus 1 equals x k plus alpha k d k and your d k was minus d k gradient of f x k and my d k is some positive definite matrix. Okay. So, this was what uh, is in general known as gradient methods and we talked about what various forms of alpha k and d k would look like. So, if d k is identity matrix, then it is the steepest descent method. right? So, I want to introduce uh, a few definitions that are useful x bar in R n is called a stationary point. If gradient of f at x bar stationary point of f, if gradient of f at x bar is equal to 0, so that is number 1, and number 2 is what is known as gradient related. Okay. So, remember the stationary point satisfies the first order necessary condition or first order sufficient condition for optimality, right? not the second order that is all. Stationary point what it says is it satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. Uh, the second definition is d k is said to be, uh, let me write it on the other side, it is a fairly long definition. d k is said to be gradient related to gradient f x k. All of you know this uh, the symbol, right? It is a sequence. It is a way to denote a sequence, right? So, it is a sequence. So, d k is a sequence. k goes all the way from 1 to infinity and gradient of f x k is also a sequence of vectors goes from k equals 1 all the way to k equals infinity. If and only if, so this is a definition, let me write it as follows. If x k converges to x bar and x bar is not a stationary point then 1 d k is bounded and number 2 limb soup k goes to infinity gradient f x k transpose d k is strictly negative. Okay, and one thing that many of you may not have seen is the symbol limb soup.
Now my my question is how many of you have not seen this limb soup thing before? Okay, many of you. Okay, so let's consider a sequence. All of you know what sequence is, right? Sequence is a sequence of numbers, vectors, or whatever. So let's say this is my k axis. Okay, so k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And let's say I have something like sine, sine pi k over 2. Yeah or pi k over, yeah, pi k over 2 is fine. So what is sine pi over 2? That's 1. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so sine, for k equals 1, sine pi k over 2 is sine pi over 2, that's 1. Then sine pi will be 0. Then sine 3 pi over 2 would be negative 1, 0, then 1, then 0, then negative 1, then 0, and so on. Right? So does this sequence uh, have a limit? Is there a limit to this sequence? No, right? Uh, it's not converging. So what is limb soup? So look at the upper envelope of this particular sequence. So what is the upper envelope? It's this. Right? And the entire sequence is bounded between this upper envelope and this lower envelope, right? And you, in this case, the upper envelope is always constant, right? It doesn't converge to anything. But what, it, what happens for any sequence in Rn that is kind of bounded, or even it doesn't need to be, it, it doesn't even need to be bounded. So any sequence in Rn will have an upper envelope, okay? and we'll have a lower envelope, and both these envelopes would converge to something. Okay, it's a fairly well-known result in real analysis. Okay, so you look at this upper envelope, this is converging to one, because it's one, 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 and so on, and if you look at this lower envelope, that also converges to, sorry, that converges to negative one. So even though the sequence itself doesn't converge, the upper envelope would converge to something eventually, and the lower envelope would also converge to something eventually, okay? And that something might be plus infinity, might be minus infinity, but it will converge to something, okay? Uh, so what it's saying is, the upper envelope of this sequence, gradient of F transpose dk, the sequence should be strictly negative. Okay, so it's fine if it is positive for the first few steps of the sequence, it's completely fine as long as the tail, okay, this upper envelope would have a tail, as k goes to infinity, it will have a tail, and that should converge to zero. Uh, sorry, should converge to strictly less than zero if x bar is not, if xk is not converging to a stationary point. So that's the definition of dk being gradient related to gradient of f at xk. Okay, and we also need dk to be bounded, right? So you don't want dk to be going all the way to infinity because then this would become unstable. This kind of algorithm would become unstable. So we want dk to be bounded and we want dk to be gradient, I mean, this is the definition of gradient related, but if xk is converging to a non-stationary point, then the limb soup, that is the upper envelope of this inner product, should be strictly negative. Should converge to, the, to a strictly negative number. So what does that look like? So this is my k, and this would be my upper envelope. This would be my lower envelope. I don't want these envelopes to converge. Okay, if it converges, then the original sequence is converging, right? Because the upper envelope is converging to the lower envelope. So that's not happening here. It may not happen here. But what we want it to be strictly negative, okay? So it should be below this k axis. So this is uh, the sequence of 
gradient of f x k transpose d k should be converging to this. Now, now my question is, if my d k is minus d k gradient of f x k, if this holds true, would this hold true or not? Would this hold true or not? So let's see. X k converges to x bar and gradient of f x bar is not equal to 0. Right? So then what is gradient of f x k transpose d k? It is minus gradient of f x k transpose d k gradient of f x k and we know that this is not uh, gradient of f is a continuous function so if f x k converging to x bar then gradient of f x k would also be converging to gradient of f x bar so so this term is going to be negative right because gradient of f x k is not equal to 0 in that for the tail of this sequence for the tail of this gradient sequence right and so this term would be strictly negative for all values of k sufficiently large and so the upper envelope will also be strictly negative okay you can make it more precise if you want to use epsilons and deltas and k epsilons and so on but for the purpose of this lecture i think this is sufficient to note that if you are using gradient descent uh, type of methods then you will always satisfy this gradient related condition So the theorem main result is xk plus 1 equals xk plus alpha k dk and alpha k chosen according to Armijo's rule and what else do we need? DK is gradient related. DK is gradient related to then if x k converges to x bar then gradient of f x bar is equal to 0 ok that is the assume. So this is the hypothesis and this is the result ok. So if your method is converging if you use steepest descent you know that it is going to be d k is going to be gradient related to the gradient of f x k and suppose you are using Armio's rule there are other rules also that you can use for instance you can use minimization rule the result would stay the same but uh, suppose you are using Armio's rule and you know that you are using steepest descent so this condition is automatically satisf satisfied and if your steepest descent converges the algorithm converges it means you have converged to a stationary point of f. So any questions so far? So is there a possibility that you can be gradient related but you won't converse to a stationary point? Can that happen? Okay, there is one person in the room who says yes. What about others? Right, okay, so let me give you an example. 
So I'm going to I'm going to not have this condition true. Okay, so let me give you an example. I want to give you a fairly simple example. The example is I want to minimize x square and I start from some x naught and my uh, my iteration is xk plus 1 equals xk minus 2 gradient fxk. Okay, so I am keeping my step size constant. So my alpha k is equal to 2 for all k. So what's the behavior of this? What's the behavior of this sequence? What do you think? What's the behavior of this sequence? Sorry? It will keep on decreasing? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I heard the answer from this side. So, my x0 is arbitrary, okay? So, my x1 is x0 minus 2. Oh, let me put a half here. Yeah, minus 2 x0. So, that is minus x0. And then x2 equals minus x0 plus 2 x0. That is x0. And x3 equals Okay, why? Because my gradient of f at x equals x. All of you understand this example? Any question on this example? Yeah. So my dk is gradient related because it's steepest descent, right? I'm not choosing my alpha k according to Armio's rule. Okay, so my xk is not converging to x bar. Okay, I want to exhibit a case where using the gradient descent, but it doesn't converge to any stationary point. It just alternates between x naught and minus x naught. Okay, but of course, if I change this to to 1, what would happen? It will converge in first time step itself. Right? If I pick alpha k equals 1, it will converge at the first time step itself, in which case you can say that if I'm picking alpha k equals 1, then my xk is converging to x bar, in which case x bar, this is my x bar, is a stationary point of the original function here, right? Can you see that? Okay, so if I picked alpha k equals 2, I wasn't converging here, right? If I pick alpha k equals 1, I'm converging here and the, the, the point at which I'm, the point to which we are, I'm converging is a stationary point of the original function that I chose. Okay. So my question, next question is, you have conversed to a stationary point. Is this stationary point a local minimum? Okay, one person says no. What about others? What's missing? What's missing in this result? 
I mean, this is a cool result. This is telling us that if we use, I mean, if we, if we, if my DK is gradient related, if alpha K is chosen according to Armio's rule, and if my gradient descent algorithm converges, then it's a stationary point. It's a fairly strong result, right? You're converging to a stationary point. That's guaranteed. But I'm not saying that X bar is a local minimum. What my question is, how would you know that X bar is a local minimum or not? Or a global minimum or not? Sorry? Second derivative? What, what should the second derivative satisfy? Sufficient condition, right? So you still need to check to guarantee local optimality of x bar, OK? So just because your steepest descent algorithm converges, it doesn't mean anything. All it means is you have converged to a stationary point, not a local minimum. Okay. In order to ascertain that you have converged to a local minimum, you need the second derivative of the function evaluated at that point to be strictly positive. Okay. Or alternatively, if the function f is convex, then this is also sufficient. Okay? So if you started with a convex function, you went through the gradient descent, the gradient descent converts, you're good. You've converged to the global minimum. Okay? But if you have a nonlinear function that's not convex, you con your gradient descent converts, it doesn't mean anything. You still have to check the second order sufficient condition to say with certainty that you have converged to a local minimum. Okay, and what you will do is uh, the first question in assignment two that I haven't uploaded yet, but the first question in assignment two would ask you to solve this problem. Assignment two, problem one, minimize x cube over three using gradient descent x in R. The, is there a minimum here? In this problem, no, right? It goes to minus infinity. So there's no minimum here, right? But what you will see, what you will observe is if you pick your gradient descent algorithm uh, carefully, with x being a positive number, you will converge to zero. That's because zero is a stationary point of this function. Okay? But it doesn't satisfy, because it doesn't satisfy the second order sufficient condition, you can guarantee any sort of local or global minimality of x equal to zero. In fact, in this case, it's just a uh, inflection point. It's not even a, it's not a, a minimum or anything. Okay, just an inflection point. So, does that make sense? Okay. So, uh, to to put it in perspective, a lot of people use machine learning algorithm, and when the algorithm converges, when the training is complete. They would say that, well, it's a, a minimum or a local minimum, or it has converged to a local minimum. But in fact, in reality, they haven't checked the second order sufficient condition yet. And therefore, they cannot claim that it has converged to a local minimum unless their original problem, training problem, was convex to begin with. OK? So you should be careful. Don't write that. If you write that and I get the paper, it's rejected. OK? Okay. The second part that I want to talk about is rate of of convergence. Okay, so the rate of convergence says how fast is your algorithm? How fast is it converging to the stationary point? 
Okay, remember we can't prove the global minimum of the stationary point because unless you check the second order condition, uh, but you can talk about the rate of convergence, how quickly it converges. Okay, so the setting is my function is a quadratic function, x transpose qx, and my xk plus 1 is xk minus gradient of alpha k and my alpha k Oh, uh, I didn't write Q is greater than 0. And let's say M is smallest eigenvalue of Q and M, capital M, is largest eigenvalue of Q. Okay, then Then what I have is f of x k plus one equals m minus m. Oh, this is less than equal to m plus m square f of x k. Okay, so what does it say? You have to look at the largest eigenvalue and the smallest eigenvalue of the second derivative of the function, okay? And that would determine how quickly the value of the function is going to converge along the sequence xk, assuming that you use a gradient descent method. Okay, this is the sorry, the steepest descent. So this is the steepest descent. Okay, this is my steepest descent. So that gives me the convergence property which is uh, which is good, but not as good as the Newton's method. So that's my next result. I want to write the hypothesis correctly. So, so F from Rn to R twice differentiable. xk plus 1 equals xk plus alpha k dk, xk converges to x bar, and my okay, so you started with Newton's method and you 
started with Newton's method and you converse to some value x bar and x bar satisfies the first order necessary first order sufficient condition and the second derivative is also strictly positive so it satisfies the second order sufficient condition for optimality assume that limit a goes to infinity dk plus Okay, we will see what exactly this condition means. And let's say alpha k is chosen according to our Muir rule. sigma less than half. Okay, then what do we get? We get limit k goes to infinity xk plus 1 minus x bar over xk minus x bar is equal to 0. So, let us unfold what this result is saying. Okay, all of you have written it. So, what is this result saying? So, this is fairly standard, nothing to think about. Okay, alpha k is chosen according to our Mio's rule. Okay, fairly standard. I don't care. What is this condition? What is dk in Newton's method? Who wants to give it a shot? What is dk in Newton's method? Yeah, who wants to give it a shot? No one? Sorry? Can you be a bit louder? What's DK? What's DK in Newton's method? Right? What is this saying? DK plus, so what does this mean? This means DK plus second derivative inverse gradient of fxk is equal to 0. Right? And what is this saying? What's the difference between the expression you see in the numerator and the expression here? x star, right? This is xk here, right? But this is x star here. So what it's saying is suppose the second derivative of the function at x star and the second derivative of the function at xk are not very different or their inverse 
are not very different. Okay, they are very close to each other because remember xk is converging to x bar. So eventually xk will be close to, sorry, this is x star, this is x bar. Okay, so eventually this will be close to x bar and so the second derivative inverse will not be very different from second derivative inverse here. Right, so this term will be going to zero, so that's fine. What it means is this term has to be negligible with respect to this term, right? Only then will this limit go to zero, okay? So that's what this, uh, that's why it's, uh, it's like Newton's method, but not exactly Newton's method because there is this, uh, there is this condition that this second derivative inverse might be very different from this second derivative inverse in some problems, okay? So we just want to avoid those cases uh, and we want to consider cases that satisfy this condition which as you can see is not very hard to not satisfy, right? Then your xk plus one minus x bar will be negligible as compared to xk minus x bar asymptotically, okay? And in practice, in practice you have xk plus one minus x bar will be some constant multiplied by xk minus x bar square. Okay, and this will be a constant. I mean, you have to assume that the function is Lipschitz and the second derivative is Lipschitz and so on. The inverse is bounded. So you have a few more conditions there, okay, which will be satisfied in most of the problems that you might be looking at in the future in which case Newton's method, the error in Newton's method will go down quadratically, okay, with respect to error at the previous time step. Okay, so Newton's method is really very fast. Okay, if this is half, if this is half, this would be one fourth, okay, assuming the constant is one, but the constant doesn't really matter. If this is one fourth, then this is one sixteenth, if this is 1 16th, then this is 1 over 256 and so on, right? So the error reduces very rapidly in Newton's method. That's not the case in, that's not the case in steepest descent, okay? Is that clear? Any questions so far? Yeah. Could you explain why we have the denom denominator of that assumption? This one? This one? Yeah. Why do we have this assumption? No, why do we have the denominator in there? The denominator? So this term has to be negligible. Remember, this term is not exactly this term. So we want this term to be negligible with respect to the actual gradient of the function at that point, okay? Then you can do all the bounding and you can show this result. Okay, the proof is there in the book if you want to see where exactly this condition is used. But all we want is this error that you are introducing with respect to the Newton's method, that error has to be very, very small in this assumption, okay, with respect to the gradient of fxk. In, in my opinion, this is not very restrictive, okay, in many cases, this will be satisfied. Sir, I have a question. Uh, sure. Yes, but the numerator should be. No, it won't. What is one over n square over one over n? Limit n goes to infinity. Okay, the numerator is going to zero much faster at a much faster rate as compared to the denominator. So it won't be in the indeterminate form zero over zero form. No, here the numerator is going to zero much faster than the denominator. Okay, the denominator is going to zero, but the numerator is going to zero much faster. Okay, and this is the analogy that you can think of. Yes? Uh, what do you call xk minus x bar is larger than one? Is larger than one? Yes. Remember, you are choosing alpha k according to Armio's rule. Okay, so alpha k will take care of taking long steps at the beginning, so eventually you will be close to x bar. 
Okay, I mean this is uh, this holds asymptotically in practice as k goes to infinity. This is the uh, this is what you will see. This is the behavior that you will see. Follow up on that. Yeah. Uh, how in, in that the example we showed it's pretty obvious that n square is going faster. Right. So you have to do bounding. So for instance, you know that xk is converging to x bar because your algorithm is converging. It means what you have to say that xk is in some neighborhood of x bar. Okay, and what you have to show is that the second derivative inverse at x bar and the second derivative inverse at any other point in the neighborhood have to not differ by a huge quantity. Yeah, as compared to the gradient, right? I mean, you have to look at this expression and you have to look at this expression and then you have to say that they are very close to each other as compared to the gradient itself. Okay, so there is some amount of bounding, bounding that you have to do, but, uh, but in practice, people don't do this bounding, but the algorithm seems to converge and it seems to converge much faster than the steepest descent. Any other question? No, this was a lot of theorem in one class. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next topic, which is least squares problem. Uh, very important class of problems, very important from machine learning perspective, very important in general in life, system identification, machine learning, and many other methods use uh, least square method. So let me introduce the problem Okay, so the problem is as follows. You want to minimize x in Rn half of norm gx square, which is the same as half of summation gi of x i equals 1 to n gi of x square. Okay, so g of x is a vector, g maps from Rn to R capital N. So g of x, g1 of x, g capital N of x. Okay, so I'll go over some of the applications of this particular problem, but for this class, in order to introduce the subject or topic, what I want to tell you is this class, this class of problems appear in many, 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 many different cases. Okay, so what would be gradient of norm of gx squared? GX, okay. What's your claim? Uh, what's your name? Okay, <laughs> okay. All right. He has taken back his statement. Taylor. Okay. Let's 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 write it up. Uh, Now tell me what is derivative of norm of gx square. Okay, I can take the derivative inside, right? What is the derivative of gi x square? Sorry? 2 gi of x gradient gi of x 
Does that make sense? Right? So, in compact form, you write gradient of g of x square as 2 gradient of g of x, g of x. Okay? Why is that? Sorry? Uh, it's, there is no, there is no transpose, I think. That's because the way gradient of g of x is de defined, gradient of g of x is defined in this matter, gradient of g1 of x, gradient of g2 of x, and so on. Okay, so it's a, it's a matrix, gradient of g of x is a matrix in N cross capital N. So now my question is, what would a gradient descent algorithm for this, uh, steepest descent algorithm for this class of problems would look like? It would be xk plus 1 equals xk minus alpha k and then what? I want steepest descent. Sorry? Minus gradient of? I want gradient of F, but what is gradient of F? Yongfeng, what is gradient of F? Right, so this is my gradient of f. I mean, f has this half term also, so that will get cancelled with this two. And so what you will be left with is the gradient of g at x k multiplied by g at x k. Okay, so this would be our steepest descent algorithm. You can pick alpha k according to whatever rule you choose. Okay, and what do we know about steepest descent? It's slow. So what should we try and do? Use something like Newton's, okay? So we want to want to use Newton type method because we know that that would be much faster uh, as compared to the steepest descent. So the method I want to introduce is Gauss-Newton method. Okay, and what Gauss-Newton's method does is it neglects some of the terms of the second derivative of this function. Okay. What is Gauss-Newton's method doing? It is neglecting some of the terms of the second derivative of this function, so that makes it much easier to implement on a computer, okay? And it gets convergence property that is almost similar to Newton's method under some circumstances, okay? So I wonder whether I should do it today or in the next week. 
let me just introduce what gauss newton's method uh, uh, final expression looks like so that is xk plus 1 xk minus alpha k So this is the Gauss Newton's method and uh, and how does it differ from the exact Newton's method so let's look at so this is my first derivative right this is my first derivative so let's look at the second derivative. First of all, this assumes assume gradient of g at x k is full rank. Okay, and n is n is larger than n is larger than n. Okay, so so we want this to be we want this matrix to be full rank because if it is full rank then this matrix multiplied by matrix transpose would become invertible. Okay, so you don't have to worry about invertibility in that case. So what I wanted to show you is how is it different? Remember this term in the inverse you have the second derivative of the function so what's the second derivative of this function this is summation i equals 1 to n 2 gradient of gix gradient of gix transpose okay i want to get rid of this two here Okay, that's one term plus g i of x So what is the term that we are neglecting here? Okay, so this is my second derivative, comes directly from this formula. Okay, so I'm taking this term here in the second derivative, but I'm neglecting this term. Okay, I'm saying that well, you know, maybe the second derivative of this is small, so we can neglect it, we don't have to compute it. The gradient of g at xk is something that I have to compute anyways, right, for gradient descent. In this case, what the only extra step that I have to do besides computing the gradient is to compute this matrix and invert it, okay? We don't need to compute the second derivative that's needed for exact Newton method, okay? So that's the benefit of Gauss-Newton's method. It, you have to compute this. And you want to use Newton's method because you know that it's faster. So what do you do? You kind of neglect one term in this step. You just take the other term and as long as it is full rank, you know it will be invertible and you can, uh, and this is also positive definite by the way. This is positive definite and this is invertible so that's good. You're, you're good. This will have convergence property that is almost like Newton's method and it will be much better than steepest descent. So better than. than steepest 
percent. Okay. Any question? Perfect. So we meet next week then. Uh, not next week. Friday. Okay. We'll meet on Friday. <laughs>